Uh, just gone 10.30, I think. Uh, apologies for being a wee minute late there. Um, welcome to the Scrutiny and Performance Committee of Thursday, 18th of July. Um, first of all, just take a note of the said and an apologies. Yes, so, Chair, we have apologies from Councillor Geddes, uh, the Council Leader, and Councillor McCutcheon. Thank you. And do we have... Oh, sorry, uh, Councillor Carr. No, I think Councillor Dykes had... had her uh, apologies in as well. I thought it had been passed on. Did you say Councillor Dykes? Yeah. No. No, Councillor Dykes did as well. I'm sure she has. Thank you. Uh, and are there any declarations of interest? Okay, if we just move on then to item three, which is the minute of the meeting of 16th of May for approval. Is there anything members would like to comment on about this, or are we happy with the minutes as presented? For those who were there, are you happy with those? Yep. Thank you. Item four. Um, this is the. This is our uh, reports for our scrutiny, and the first one is this, the procurement and commissioning scrutiny review. A uh, presentation by Dumfries and Galloway Council report by Assistant Chief Executive. We've been asked to consider the evidence here in the in the papers. Um, so, with that, um, would you like to, would the officer like to speak to the paper? Thank you. This is the first report that you've had on your third review about procurement and commissioning. And what you'd agreed to do was to to start this one off with a presentation from the council's own um, expert witness. So this is a record here of the information that was presented for particularly perhaps for members who weren't present to um, consider the information that was presented and ask any questions. And this will form part of your information gathering for this review. Thank you, Liz. Now, there's a number of issues raised, obviously, in appendix um, on page 13. So I was just wondering if... Uh, members would like to add their thoughts to that or ask any questions. Councillor Carruthers. Thanks very much, Chair. Uh, just reading through it, and obviously it was, we were made aware that we were at quite high performing anyways across Scotland. I think we're fourth out of the 32 when it comes to, in particular, procurement. But see, under issue four, it says there is a need to change the culture in our relationship with the third sector to move away from grants and support to specific contracts and commissioning for the delivery of services that the council needs to support communities, and it goes on and so forth. I just want to—it's it, a wee bit of a tiny slant, and I've got the appropriate man sitting beside me. But we've got a, an issue, I suppose, that's gone through community health and social care partnership board and day centres, and how they are being commissioned to different, deliver different services. I'm just wondering, I mean, if that, is that something we can look at through the scrutiny committee, see how that works, and I like to hear how uh, what other members are thinking as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, Councillor Ferguson, is it the same point? Um, I, it's actually in, in direct response to it. And, uh, uh, being raised here uh, has actually been very helpful in the, uh, the way we're, we're currently looking at provision. And if we use that as an example, uh, the day centres, it's a perfect example um, where the two people sitting either side of you are uh, in their day jobs are actively involved in those roles. So um, we found it. Uh, uh, as, uh, as a board, very helpful that uh, um, it's been taken forward in this way, and it's uh, helped focus our mind on the on the job in hand, shall we say? Uh, but it's not easy, I've got to say, and uh, it it's this change in culture uh, is uh, not is a difficult process. I mean, is that something we could uh, include or focus on whenever we're looking at what to take forward? Apologies, Chair, if I've got to say a few words. Uh, with regard to the, the grants, I think there is an area for members to look at on whether we are still going to have grants um, and core funding and what that should look like and for what sort of services, because we're definitely almost procuring fairly large services under co core funding arrangements. So you know, that's a matter for yourselves to consider. And the other area I think we need to think about is often we are not the sole funder and we're in fact just a contributor to 
a number of different uh, funding streams that come into organisations. And in that case, I think we have to ask whether procurement and tendering is the right approach or whether there is still a role for grants in that situation if we were just making a contribution rather than being it totally attributable to our funding. You want to come back, Councillor Carruthers? Yeah, I think Lorna's maybe trying to get in there as well, but I mean, I'm absolutely, uh, Lorna, uh, sorry, Rona summed it up perfectly at the end, uh, just as she finished off. It is that two issues. I mean, I think there may well be room for still grant funding. Uh, when I see this rolling out with the way what's happening to these centres, but I think I'd like to get more evidence, more understanding, uh, just how that could possibly work. Because I am for commissioning services as well that are more, uh, most appropriate to the council, how they are delivered to create best value. But uh, we have a kind of unique situation I feel with with these centres in particular. But you know, I'd like to see it investigate broaden a, a wee bit more. Thank you, Chair. When the members uh, agreed the objectives for this review, you were very clear that you wanted to involve both independent and third sector partners in, in your investigations. So I think it's appropriate that you may wish to consider who you wish to invite and, and take evidence from and understand that and, and indeed any other sort of actions you want to take. You don't have to do that today, but I think it was very clear from, from your own deliberations and the objectives for this review that that was a key part of um, your evidence sessions. Thank you. Um, are there any other issues that, that uh, members felt should be raised or explored in more detail? Councillor Ferguson. Uh, th thanks, Chair. It's actually issue five. Um, and just asking if uh, this early identification, if there's any progress getting made and uh, how we better do this, it's. Uh, It's, it's the monitoring of, of, of our contracts or, or grants and the whole the whole thing is that we did a, a continuity across all the service areas. It, a, I know there are certain departments who contract or, a, or, or provide grants for things a, a, more than other departments, but it really is a council-wide uh, issue here and it's a council-wide responsibility, I would suggest. Um, so that other departments are finding something's not quite right, they should know who to go to, where to go to. Um, and I suppose, I'm maybe just flagging up here, it's the need um, for, for training in identifying when things don't appear to be right. Uh, it's dead easy when you're sitting in a, an old folks uh, lunch club and they're telling you that the food's terrible, um, for example, and uh, you're there and you can see it. And it, 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 it's, it's another issue, it's, a, it's it requiring a bit more expertise. Um, and I'm just wondering, uh, how do we build in uh, a scrutiny of the training to make sure that the staff and elected members, because we are often in positions where we see things that aren't right, um, I, that, that training that's needed to help monitor um, and get value for money. Chair, I, at the moment we are working up a sort of basic contract management course that will then hopefully be rolled out to all departments. I'd be happy to share the content uh, with this committee uh, of what that training would look like. And then obviously over a period we should be evaluating and monitoring what the difference uh, that training makes to people's confidence as well as the, the outcomes for the council in terms of how we're getting, making sure that we're getting what we've paid for in terms of the contracts that we've put in place. Mr Ferguson and then Councillor Wiper. Um, uh, can I assume then that the staff who are involved in the, in the monitoring process that will be mandatory training, it won't be optional? Yes, I think we're trying to get each department to identify who is actually involved in contract management, uh, whether f for grants uh, or, or for contracts and put that in place. Because there's certainly an, uh, an inconsistency at the moment of people's uh, skills and confidence in, in managing contracts. Thanks, Rana. Councillor Wiper. Thank you, Chair. It's actually on issue one, uh, the lack of people registering on the Meet the Buyer um, event. I just wonder if there's anything to, we could be done to, to, to co co um, counter that. I mean, I think there's an attitude out there amongst smaller businesses, like some in the building trade, for example, that they think, what's the point, we won't get the job anyway. Um, 
So, I mean, is there anything that we could do to actually counter that perception? I, mean, I think that's possibly tied in with um, uh, just over the page in the answer there. In supporting and sustaining businesses to take up council contracts and that, that uh, need to um, assist people in actually securing the contract, it's not that the skill set isn't there, it's just that the actual knowledge in terms of how to go through the process. Um, but maybe you'd like to speak a wee bit more about that. I think just before um, Clark starts, I think it's actually the perception that there's no no point in actually trying because you know they think the contracts are tied up with, with suppliers who are already on board with the council. It's not the helping them through the process. It's actually changing the mindset. It's worth getting involved in the first place. Even right. So we, even before entering the process, yeah, they feel it's not worth. It's actually making it so that it's worth their while actually entering the process. Right. Thank you. Yes, Chair. If, if I could just add, I think you know, that's p part of hopefully what will come out of this work stream and that I would hope as, as the review goes forward and you hear from the Chamber of Commerce and Federation of Small Businesses eh, and also perhaps our colleagues in economic regeneration that they would be able to eh, furnish you with ideas on, on how we could do that better and make sure that people eh, do think they have got a chance to win business with us. Councillor Gautry. take that on board as a suggestion. Is there anything we'd like to add to that? I think one of the things that might be associated with that is uh, how do you review that list? You know, once you're on it, is that you on it forever? And, you know, how do you keep it updated so that should a contractor fall by the wayside or, or change their uh, tack? Councillor Ferguson. Um, uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, just putting up what Tom was saying there, uh, it, it actually ties into the, the issue at um, four about the third sector and about grants and how we how we uh, get people to do things for us because uh, there's a huge raft of feeling out there amongst the uh, particularly voluntary organisations or third sector, whatever you want to call them, that it's actually not worth applying for grants because it costs you more money to administer the grant than, than the, the actual grant you get. So it actually puts you in a negative situation and they don't apply for money. Um, I, but, uh, 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 and I actually think we need to marry the two together there because what it would actually give would be a, if we moved, if, if we do move away from grants to, uh, away from uh, any sort of core funding or how, however you want to call it, you know, buying the service in, um, they don't have to then come to us and tell us what they want money from us to do. Um, it, it's just changed that whole culture. And that would actually come into it because that, 
that alone would help support um, the local businesses to take up things. Um, I, and it's a, I suppose it's a way of marrying the two processes together, if, if that's possible. And Ron is the expert in this, no me, but uh, I, I actually think there's maybe some merit in taking that forward, just how, how, how we actually do that. Okay, thank you. Is there any further points you'd like to make, Councillor McCautry? Councillor Wiper. Thank you, Chair. It's just to put my top and in from the other side of the fence. Uh, as manager of the pool at Kirkubi, we do apply for quite a lot of grants to the Council and other bodies, and I would actually say that the process for the Council grants is fairly straightforward. I mean, I, I don't know what Andy's talking about. Um, costs more to administrate the grant, or whether that's in a bigger organisation, but it, um, it, it is a fairly straightforward process. It's, it's, it's nothing like what it used to be. It used to be 20 pages long. You know, you've only got about three or four pages now for most applications. Well, yeah, I mean, one example I'll give you straight away is Leader, um, which Council uh, uh, support, and it is a uh, uh, you need to be a, a, a Philadelphia lawyer to get round about the application process, and then once you've been through uh, probably about six months of a process where you've been led on all the way down the way and um, talking for personal experience here, and then at the last minute you're told you're not getting it, but then when you find out it was actually going to cost you as much to actually manage the process they were required to be put in place, then uh, as an organisation that I know pulled out of the application at that stage, um, purely simply because it, it's. Uh, um, the draconian conditions placed uh, by that particular funding mechanism, funding stream, um, made it no an attractive proposition. And this is a fairly major uh, sporting organisation in the Friesen Galloway. Thank you. Uh, with your leave, Councillor Crothers, I'll let Councillor Wiper come back and then let you. Just very, very briefly, Chair, I mean, talking about leader, I mean, I do agree with that. I mean, we have been led down that road as well. Um, with the promise of money and then having to pull out at the last minute because we were told that we weren't getting anything. I would totally agree with that. But the council grants like uh, discretionary budget, uh, discretionary budget from area committee is a very straightforward mechanism. Councillor Carthers. Uh, sorry, I just said, I was picking up on Councillor McCautry's point and we discussed it yesterday. Uh, there was three years Richard was there as well. And one of our, we were discussing the, the local, the area committee grant funding and we've, we're looking at a three-year drop-off programme, so if somebody does come forward with an application to maximum term, they could actually obtain that funding for. So it's three years, so we are actually doing that at a, at a local level, certainly in, in Andale and Estale. But, I mean, I suppose, going, looking at the recommendations, I take this has got to come back to us. We're just making sure the evidence, uh, there's any other points of clarity on it, and we'll get a full report coming back at some point. Is that right? So we can get a full discussion on it? That's or is this... The next stage of the review is for you to consider all the evidence that you've had and yes, at that point you'll have an opportunity to reconsider all the information that you've got in front of you. I think um, with that, I mean, we can obviously go to the recommendations with that understanding. We're really just trying to <clears throat> tease out and gather more thoughts on the issues that have been raised so that they can come back to us at a future, um, a future date. Um, with that, though, are we happy to uh, go with the recommendation that we're happy that we've considered the evidence that was presented to us? Yep. Yep, and um, I'm wondering if it would be worth uh, just a wee summary of uh, some of the issues that we've sort of highlighted that need sort of further attention. 
think in the minute, the minute will record the kind of main, main areas of consideration that you want to take forward as part of your evidence and evidence gathering. So we'll take a note of that within the minute and also reflect it in your own action plan. Thank you. Thank you. We've got somebody here. Thank you. Uh, so if members uh, would uh, perhaps comment on my, my summary here that I've got. Um, we've got contract management to have a, a, a look at what training we might provide and how that might be monitored and what impact that would have. Uh, we would look at the idea of approved lists or a legal equivalent that we can now have these days because approved lists have changed a little bit, but I, I will certainly take on uh, to look at that. Uh, the, the role of uh, service committees in reviewing the, the grant funding that they provide uh, to organisations and to see that those meet in with council priorities and, and generally to look at the issue of uh, grants and their administration and how that fits in with commissioning and tendering. Okay, are we happy with that? Okay, you may recover it there, but I just think the point that I raised under issue four, can we, I suppose that Lorna kind of answered that when she said that that will come back with day centres in particular, I was thinking they'll be part of the, they'll maybe be contacted and used as, as, as evidence gathered, I think that was the point. Okay, then if we move on to item number five, uh, this is the Scrutiny review performance indicators, and this is feedback from the site visits, which uh, some of us were able to attend on the different days. Um, so we're being asked to, this is the visits to East Lothian East Ayrshire Councils in June, and um, we're just being asked to review the evidence and information collected, and obviously add any comments and thoughts we might have on that, and consider any if any further evidence from these councils or other site visits uh, might be required or appropriate. Um, and obviously subject to that, agree further discussions and visits over the next two months. So with that, um, having read your papers, obviously, um, is there anything you'd like to add on the Appendix 1 or 2? Councillor Pruddy. Thanks, Chair. Uh, yeah, just on the question and answer in the visit to East Lothian, I asked a supplementary question about the, the key performance indicators and how often they reviewed them. And like maybe like the answer sort of recorded there as, as well. I think they said that they had just undergone gone a review. <coughs> they're all, they're always looking to to improve their performance indicators um, so that they meet the needs of members, the needs of the public, and also uh, also provide the best smart smart targets uh, available. So perhaps that could be added into the. Councillor Thompson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I attended the visit to East Lothian Council, and uh, you know I think we note that both councils we actually visited employ a cabinet system, which is entirely different to how we actually run our organisation here. And because of that, I think in some ways it lacked some value, um, though there were points that were of interest. So I think it would still be useful to actually visit a council that you know operates on the same basis that we do, um, where we might pick up some, some pointers. It was quite difficult to actually compare what we were doing and what these councils were doing with their particular system. However, one thing I was kind of heartened by, I didn't think we were very terrific, but, you know, we were certainly as good, if not better, than uh, the ones there. I should probably just double check. This meeting is being recorded, isn't it? <laughs> like, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have no problems in standing by what I've said. Liz, <clears throat> um, I don't know if you want to come in on that, just on that. Okay. Um, certainly the councils that um, we identified for site visits were drawn from the examples of performance reports that you liked the look of when we had the, the session over in Woodbank in February. Um, and because that issue about um, going to the meeting to see how they dealt with that um, report the two that we'd gone to were cabinet systems. So we went back and had a look at the councils which do have a committee system and compared that with the examples of performance reports that you had liked the look of. Um, and both Aberdeen City and Edinburgh City 
um, you like their performance report and they operate a committee system. So if you did want to do um, any further site visits to additional councils, or indeed we had talked about doing video conferencing or having a dialogue in a different way, that perhaps would be two of the councils that, that meet both the criteria. You like their performance report and they run a committee system. So that might um, be of, of additional information. I think that the purpose of selecting the performance reports in the first case was so that you could you were looking at um, the, the production of the material, how they present information to members. I think the issue about going to observe a meeting and seeing how the members deal with it in the in the committee meeting itself um, is a different, perhaps different issue, but um, certainly one that's perfectly valid for your scrutiny review. Uh, Councillor McCautry. So could you put your mic on, please? Could you put your microphone on? Oh, I, th I think the interesting thing at East Lothian meeting was that uh, they're still very much in the dark ages there in terms of how their committees run, because we watched the planning committee and we watched the uh, scrutiny committee. The thing about the planning committee was you couldn't tell who were councillors and who were officers. They were all mixed up around the table. There was no name, name, name tags there. So had great difficulty. I mean, if, if I'd been a member of the public from uh, East Lothian and I didn't know who the councillors were, I would have had great difficulty identifying who were councillors, who were officers. It was actually hard to, to decide whether it was an officer that was moving something because they really were interrupting each other. Uh, and then when they actually had a vote on something, it was a show of hands, which is one of the most archaic and corrupt ways of ever conducting council business. Put your hand up if you're in favour. Put your hand up if, if you're against. I mean, I remember how we got ready here, and that's why somebody was voting twice to prove that the system didn't work. But again, at the planning committee, no audiovisual displays. So they're talking about a planning application, quite a complicated one. Nothing up there for members to refer to in terms of roadmaps. So whilst I found their scrutiny side interesting, when I saw how they conducted their planning, I felt uh, they had a lot to learn from us. Thank you. And Councillor Carruthers? Well, I have to agree with both. Tom and Ted, when it comes to the comments and as far as, without being dis disrespectful in any way, I mean, we were, we were well received and well looked after, and uh, any questions that we asked, again, the members and officers uh, were, were very uh, welcome in it and, and informed us so they did. But, uh, no, I mean, I'd, I'd be minded the same as the rest. If we could get a committee system, that was the only thing that lacked for me because they were cabinet. It wasn't comparing apples with apples, and I felt that on the day, uh, and it did highlight to me, like as uh, other members are saying in particular, uh, our level of performance looked very high compared to uh, potentially, I think, other councils. So it'd be like, it would be nice to see somewhere else just with a similar system. Thank you. Councillor Hessler. Chair, I was quite interested in the, the format of the meetings and stuff. Um, it, a note from East Ayrshire, they are mutually exclusive between policy committee and or their uh, members on the cabinet and East Lothian it doesn't state are they mutually exclusive or can they go back and forward and maybe from the people who were at them was there any benefit from being mixed or was it better from being separate members I'll throw that open to the members who were there I guess um, Councillor Crothers? I was only East Lothian, so I don't think any anybody's here who was at both. I don't think apart from the officers. Yep. Good to get an objective uh, um, summary from, uh, from yourself. I think it probably goes back to the fact that both of the committees you went to see were scrutiny committees, so they perhaps did have a, a slightly different... Uh, sorry, were from Cabinet Councils, so they did perhaps have a slightly different format. Um, to the meetings. But I think certainly comments from members at, at both the visits were that the, the way in which you run your committee meetings um, and the engagement of members, um, that it was felt that our arrangements were, in, were better, in fact, than both of the councils that you went to see. Um, one other issue that, uh, <clears throat> that's come, it's actually in the notes as an issue to take forward, but it's to do with the inclusion of financial information um, and staff information in um, uh, when in the reports, sort of integral to the reports. I was just wondering if there's any thoughts on that. This is from the East Ayrshire um, visit. 
I see it's in there as an action point, but how would that, what sort of shape would that take, do you think? The issues to be taken forward in both of the feedback forms were matters which members commented that seemed to be a, a positive step. And so when you're looking at considering your evidence and formulating your recommendations from the review, we'll bring these points forward to you at that time as something that for you to particularly take into account. Thank you. Councillor Ferguson. Um, right, o OK. I, I agree with that last statement, but we're in an assets-based business these days, and assets aren't only money and people. There are also buildings and everything else uh, and, and the work environment. So if we're going to do that, can we look at the, uh, the holistic, the whole approach to, uh, to looking at the assets of the organisation and make sure that um, it ties in with the... Uh, the service delivery, because if we focus in too closely on finance and, and the people, um, we lose out on then the environment part, uh, i.e. the buildings and that are the fit for purpose of people coming, all that kind of stuff, um, and get a much, much uh, wider view of uh, our performance. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brody. Thanks, Chair. Uh, following on from Councillor Thompson's comments about both both councils having a cabinet system, they also had a majority of, of non-administration councils on it, and that seemed to work, work very well. The, the administration had the confidence to, to allow the committee to, to have that, that major, inbuilt majority, which is not the administration. Uh, and I think that there's an opportunity in the review of committees, etc., to look at that again. And I, I would ask the administration to consider that when the ad hoc subcommittee reports back to the Council. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any further comments on the site visits? Okay, in that case then, are we happy to go with the recommendations and the understanding that the, the points that have been raised will be... I don't know if this will get summarised under item 7, just as the, as the next steps, but... I could just highlight, yes, yeah, so under um, item 1, we'll update the note of the visit to include Councillor Brodie's um, supplementary question. Um, and under item 2.3, I'm assuming that you don't want to take any further evidence from the councils or have any further visits with these two councils, I think. Is that, you feel you've got all the information that we can from them and in item 2.4 perhaps you would like to visit, well there's Edinburgh or Aberdeen City, I'm guessing in terms of logistics would Edinburgh City be the most convenient? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Members happy with that? Okay, thank you. On to item number six, this is scrutiny review of training and development presentation by Improvement Service. Um, this includes a record of the session with Doc McLaughlin, who was um, good value, and we've been asked to consider the evidence and information presented during the presentation. Um, so I'll just throw it open. Is there anybody who would like to add to this uh, before I throw it open to members? No. Councillor Hislop. Chair, I wasn't able to attend, but reading through the questions and the answers, I got very little out of what came down, but I, well, whatever suits yourself. I might be wrong because I wasn't there, but that's how it reads. Um, you know, have you examples of good base practice? Well, there's a couple, but it depends on what suits you. Didn't get much out of it, actually. Out of the written part, I don't know what happened on the day. Councillor Ferguson. Um, th thanks, Chair. I'm actually just looking here in the, the very first question. Um, uh, there seems to be some good examples of uh, a place-based approach in Edinburgh, and I'm wondering if we can actually marry that up with the proposed visit that we've just discussed in the previous item. Liz. <coughs> yep. And Councillor Carruthers. Thanks, uh, Chair. I mean, the thing, as, as you read through it and on the day, and I picked up more when I read this rather than on the day, but I think the point she kept coming back to when she was answering, that you have to be absolutely clear with your vision and, and define that and, and keep aiming for, for, for that goal. That's what, to me, it kept coming through. Be absolutely clear what your vision is, what your targets are. Keep focused on them and keep driving towards them. It kept coming through again and again. 
so as much as anything, I think that's, I mean, that's, it's probably about clear political direction as well, uh, is, is what's coming through there, but it's, it is, it's, this is strongly came through to establish exactly what you want, build your plan, then, then go forward and fulfil it. That's what just, I kept picking up to you. Um, I, I was able to attend the session and it was clear that, I, I do take on board what you're saying, it was very non-prescriptive in terms of this is how you should do it, um, just that there's a, a one size doesn't fit all, and it did seem to be a, more of a philosophy of it's goal oriented, you set your vision, you set your goal, you look at the strategic things and then align things to meet that goal. Um, I don't know if that's the sense that the other members uh, got whenever they were there. Yeah. Are there any further questions or comments the members would like to make before we go to the recommendation? I suppose I didn't. I wasn't absolutely clear about it. I mean, I think it was the so how you've explained it there. I mean, I, I'm aligned to that. Again, it is about setting your goals, having a clear vision, and moving on. And that's how I think the, the council would best be able to, to, to improve on this if we're quite clear. And I was like, but it, is, it was a good learning point as far as that. I would sign up to the. Ethos, uh, what the improvement service were, were pushing at us. With that, then, are we happy to go to recommendations? Okay, thank you. Okay, so if we go to number seven, uh, this is the scrutiny reviews, actions and next steps. And uh, I'll invite Liz to speak to this, I think. Thank you. If I could just take you through the appendices one by one. And the point of this is just to be absolutely clear about what we're arranging for each of the three reviews, um, what should happen next. So on page 37, which is the per performance indicators review, the proposal is that um, we go to Edinburgh City Council to visit um, their appropriate committee. Hopefully um, that will be within the time scale of your um, information gathering, which is due to conclude at the end of September, but depending obviously on the date of their committee meeting, um, we might need to, to spill a little over into your next stage, but we'll certainly do that. Um, the other tasks that we'd identified for the review have been completed in that page. And if I could take you over to the next page. In terms of contributors from council services, what we would like you to consider is how we engage with council services because your scope had identified that we wanted to talk to <coughs> appropriate people within the council. And so one of the suggestions um, about how we would deal with that is that we could either have a, a series of interviews with chairs or perhaps a round table discussion with appropriate council officers and service committee chairs, talking to them about what the relationship is between how the service committee deals with the business plans and the point of your review about how the council deals with its council priorities and commitments to just to make that um, link between the committee activity and the overall council priorities and commitments. So that's one way that we thought um, you might like to undertake that part of your scope. The other option, as is, is stated there, is that you could have a series of one-to-one -one interviews with committee chairs and directors. So that's one particular area that we would like to, to do something um, about at the next um, the next preparatory workshop or perhaps at a separate session. And then the other element is about partner contributors and about who you would like to come and give you expert evidence. And again, your review scope had identified a number of organisations that you felt could contribute to that. Um, and it's for you to determine who you think you would like to hear from Again, depending on availability, that could either be at the preparatory workshop or the committee or indeed a separate session. So these are the two areas that we would like your advice and your views on today about what you would like us to set up. Thanks, Liz. Well, just on that, I mean, um, is there any feeling amongst members about uh, the, the, how we deal with council services, whether it's a panel or um, interviews with chairs, etc.? I mean, I think I'm happy to, to do either, whatever the committee feels. I'll be up for, for either or, being, being very honest. Okay. 
Councillor McCautry. I'm, I'm not particularly bothered which way we do it, but I think when we need to uh, home in on certain aspects, there's two, two issues that have been in the public domain recently where uh, the get out clause for officers is oh, it's all within budget. And I'm thinking principally of the debacle of the War Memorial in Moffat and the Burnsy statue issue in Dumfries, where officers have done a volte face, uh, fancy, on uh, their original uh, decision on how they're going to handle these things. A new answer I got at the relevant committee was, well, that's all right, we're not going to shift the memorial anymore, we're going to keep things as they are, and we can still do it within budget. The same with the Burns statue thing, where road traffic orders were uh, advertised, public uh, upset, etc. Everything's hunky-dory, we can do it within budget. These things should be scrutinised to see how much money is actually been wasted. You know, instead of listening to public opinion, or get, getting the public opinion, because it's certainly one of them, it was only after a, a, an area committee meeting, it was actually a Sunday where officers were out delivering letters to residents in the Freestown Centre. And there's issues there that weren't tackled at the service committee, but I think there's questions that need to be asked about the behaviour of certain officers and how they're doing things. And their get-out clause seems to be, it's within budget, but mistakes have been made and they're not answered for the mistakes. So it's how we drill down into these ones. I think in, in terms of uh, how we engage with council services as a scrutiny committee, I, I mean, are we... Does our scope allow us to go down to that level, or, or are we, are we do a free reign in that respect? The focus certainly is about the council's priorities and commitments. So I think, well, the, the point about um, looking at the financial element, um, we can certainly make sure that's part of the round table. But your scope is about how the council's priorities and commitments are being delivered. So we would certainly make sure it was within that context. I'm sorry, Councillor Crowther, I was letting you in there. I just mean, Tom's raised a, a valid point there, but PH and E on Tuesday referred that particular burn statute to scrutiny committee. So we'll see that full in depth and we'll drill into all the things that you're talking about there. So that will come here at some point. But uh, I was going back to the to the point uh, Richard made earlier. I mean, I'd be happy to do to either sit on the table or we take, take on the forensic questioning as a chair. And that's the point I was trying to get to. I, I'm happy with either. And happy to be led by the opposition if that's the case. Councillor Ferguson. Um, I, I don't think that's an either or. I think you, you could have actually have both. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it's, a, uh, it's to make a choice between one or other. I'd actually advocate both. Okay, we're happy to have a flexible approach then with that. Okay. So and yes, in sorry. terms of your partner contributor, um, are there any of these, the ones named, that you would particularly like to speak to? What, what committee did we have the chart from? Uh... Yes, that was a, a general update on the health and wellbeing unit. This would the focus in this would be um, from NHS to Fries and Galloway about how they interact with us about our priorities and commitments about how they perhaps look at performance um, in areas that affect our priorities and commitments. Perhaps we were working together, so it would be a very specific focus. Um, I don't think it would be Derek Cox who would be involved in that. Um, it would perhaps be the chief exec who might want to to come along, or their um, efficiency manager. Well, I like Derek Cox's comments. Our, our employees were fitting in very well with his department. I think that's it at all. Um, can I also suggest uh, just covalent, um, given that we're, it's a performance indicators, um, that it might be worth uh, actually looking at the, the tools that we're using to actually look at the performance indicators. Um, I don't know if that's shared amongst members. but yeah. Councillor Ferguson. Um, thanks. I've uh, been involved a lot, obviously, in, in uh, working with the NHS uh, and looking at, uh, at their performance indicators. Uh, we know that other areas who are a bit more advanced than us in terms of integration are using a joint tool and they tend to use covalent. Um, I, I actually think it's really valuable to get a uh, the external organise, uh, organisations who have signed up the single outcome agreement, because that's exactly what we should be talking about, think, thinking about here, uh, to get 
down to one, whether it's covalently used or whatever, because uh, I sit and look at uh, performance reviews from the NHS, which are basically nothing like. Um, we should be getting the same from DAGCAS, for example, um, who are substantial funded from us. Uh, uh, and, and look at all these other organisations because they should all be contributing uh, into this process as well. And uh, the quicker we can get an agreement under the single outcome agreement to use one system, then we'll then be able to measure. Because uh, quite frankly, how on earth are we going to measure the performance and in integration process as, uh, as we move towards integration anyway, if the two systems are different? Um, it's an impossible task. And, uh, so the quicker that happens, the better. And uh, I, how we drive that forward, uh, I, I'm not entirely sure, but it has to be done, and it has to be done very quickly, I would suggest. Is it, I mean, what sort of time scale are you looking at for getting the, the external? Again, your um, information gathering is due to conclude in September. Um, you have the preparatory workshop in August and your September committee, so we would obviously try and schedule these in. Um, to existing dates, but if you were agreeable to, to have additional sessions, then we could programme that in. Are we so minded? Thank you. Thank you. Um, on page 39, we're now into the training and development review, and you had agreed at your last meeting that we would look at um, going to other council training units, and I think the one that, that seems to have been mentioned most frequently is social work. So would that be where you would like to go and have your um, have your next visit? That be a discussion with appropriate staff. We welcome any suggestions from members or, or for alternatives, but um, I don't see why not. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, in terms of site visits, again, your original scope had identified um, three particular councils that you might want to go and visit to, and given the earlier conversations, Edinburgh would perhaps seem to jump out from that. Would that be acceptable to you? And then we can fit that in, in the same day. Looking at my training and development <laughs> review colleagues, is that, is that okay? Mm -hmm. Um, and on page 40, again, there are two other areas for this review. In terms of contributors from other partners, you had identified a list of local partners who would have a, a relevant contribution to make. Um, Dumfries and Galloway College are very keen to come along and speak to you about the links that we have with them. If that was agreeable, we would perhaps accelerate them. Members happy to meet with the college. Yeah. Okay. Councilor Ferguson. Um, can we add the uh, agricultural college, Mighty the Barney? The Barney. Okay. And then, in terms of your subject specialist, again, your scope had identified that the Society of Personnel Directors in Scotland, um, I think commonly known as SPUDS. <laughs> The Spuds, um, if you would like to have an expert witness session from one of their representatives. Members <laughs> uh, happy with that then? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Right. And on page 41, you'll see that we obviously had um, invited Scotland Excel to come along to this meeting. They had been invited in April, but they advised us on the 8th of July that they weren't able to come along to this meeting. And so that, that's certainly something that we're keen to have. You've added in, in your discussions today, um, some additional features about looking at the day centres as an example of third and independent sectors, getting information on the contract management training approved lists and the role of service committees and area committees in terms of grant funding. So we'll certainly add that in to your forward work programme. In terms of, I suppose, perhaps trying to catch up um, on this review, because Scotland Excel haven't been here today, again, if you were agreeable, we would perhaps look at a date for Scotland Excel and perhaps the Chambers of Commerce and perhaps the South West Hub to come and do a, a sort of a shared event 
um, perhaps in a sort of workshop format, if that was um, acceptable to you. And that would then sort of bring you back on schedule for your that phase of your review. That's Are we happy to, to go with that? Yep. Fine. So we'll, we'll update that with the decisions you've made today about the additional material you would like and the, the lines of the inquiry that you would like to follow. With that then, um, if we go to the recommendations for number seven, um, I think we've had a, a fair summary then of what's going to happen next. So if we can note the progress and actions taken from each of the three scrutiny reviews and review and agree the next steps for each of the three scrutiny reviews. Happy to do so? Yep, thank you. No further business, meeting over.